Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. To me, this does seem to be a passage of Scripture that speaks about the Lord's day as being a specific day of worship. What do you think about that? Sunday is is not our only day of worship. For the early church, they worship Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and for kicks, they started again on Sunday, Monday. <laughs> yeah. But the <clears throat> but they held Sunday extremely important. Yeah. Because that's the day their Lord rose and 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 weekly they identified they yeah. celebrated that resurrection. Yeah, that's right. They were worshipping Jesus on Sunday from the moment he was raised from the dead. <laughs> yeah. In fact, yeah, if no. we go if we go to the Gospel of John, I thought this this was interesting in the Gospel of John where obviously um, he rose from the dead um, on the on the Sunday and um, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and started worshipping on the Sunday. And then in chapter um, 20, uh, verse 19, it says, So while it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and while the doors were shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And it's obvious here that they were all gathered together. They were all gathered together on this specific first day of the week and Jesus shows up and says, peace be with you. And then if you go in the same chapter, it says in verse 26, it says, and after eight days. Now, if you count eight days, you'll be back at the first day of the week. So after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. It does seem as though at least um, John is emphasizing the fact that he appeared on the first day of the week, and then eight days later he appeared unto them again. Big things always happen on Sunday in the Scriptures. Big things always happen. The resurrection. Uh, I mean, seriously. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) You look at it. And and that's and that's what they're doing now. Now somebody want, might, may want to argue and say, well, um, the evening, um, the the last part of uh, of the first day of the week was actually Saturday night. No, um, well, I mean, I, I guess it could start that way because the morning and the evening was the first day. Yeah, you know, I I I think there's something to be said for churches that want to start on a Saturday night, that they want to stick with the Jewish calendar, but be true to Sunday. However, when we see Gentiles doing this, yeah, Gentiles did not start in the evening. They started in the morning. That's right. And they did it on Sunday. Yeah. So we we see in in, in the beginning, I'll say something else as a pastor. Do you know how many times I have preached my guts out on a Sunday morning, and then somebody comes, contacts me, and they say, hey, pastor, um, uh, can you pray for me about this? I want, oh, you should have been here Sunday. Yeah. I just preached everything about that. Yeah. And, and, and it's, I, <laughs> I think God expects you. Yeah. You know, we're, we're doing a church plant over in Bath, about an hour and a half away, and uh, and and I, I said, look, we're not officially organized as a church yet. Yeah. Please try to find somewhere if it doesn't hurt your conscience too much. Try to find somewhere where you can get around with other believers, because as we will read in the book of the Revelation, I mean, even a dead church belonged to Jesus. Yeah. Even the lukewarm church belonged to Jesus. And I'm not saying we should be okay with those things. I I just mean Jesus didn't completely abandon them. Yeah. But there's something absolutely to be said with 
And, and it doesn't just say Sunday. It is the Lord's Day. Yeah, that's right. What do, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, there's a couple of places in the in the book of Acts where they met on the first day of the week. So that, that adds to the fact that it is a Sunday. It says, you know, when you gather together on the first day of the week, it talks about um, putting money aside um, for the poor saints in Jerusalem. Um, that's in First Corinthians. Yeah, that's right. In fact, let me just pull up the pull up the notes 16? here. Um, yeah, I think that's right. So First Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter sixteen. All right, right at the uh, beginning, right? Yeah, yeah verse two. Uh, it talks about when you gather together uh, on the first day um, to put aside the money. Um, did you want to read it, First Corinthians? Yeah, uh, verse 1 and verse 2 says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, yeah. that there be no gatherings when I come. And, and this, this just seems like first day of the week is the natural time yeah. that the body, no matter what, was going to meet together. Yeah. And then also in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 20, <clears throat> and we'll read the church fathers in a moment. I'll read a, a number of quotes. Uh, verse Acts, 7, I think you're looking for. That's right. Uh, on the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul began speaking to them, intending to leave the next day, and he prolonged his message until midnight. So it seems pretty clear to me that they gathered together on the first day of the week to break bread, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and the early church, right from the beginning, they were not Sabbath keepers. The early church um, believed, in, in fact, um, I think it was the Council of Laodicea, uh, they, they referred to the, the fact that the claim that Christians have to keep the Sabbath, they referred to it as Judaizing, you know, which is the language. I mean, that Caleb, Paul hold on a second. You're going to offend a lot of people who <laughs> have, true. who, who have already called anybody that worships on Sunday as receiving the mark of the beast That's right. and blasphemers. But <laughs> I mean, right. you're, we, we can't let facts get in the way of, of their good stories. Yeah, that's right. I mean, people are free to worship on the Sabbath day. You know? Sure, of like, course they are. There's nothing wrong with it if that's what their conscience says. Um, but uh, Paul makes it very clear that these things are a shadow of Christ, you know. Um, and I'll, I'll do a video soon on the book of Col Colossians. Um, but um, let me just that's quickly wise. read um, these quotes so that we can see, because another thing that people say in the book of the Revelation, and I read this actually in a number of commentaries, they say that um, when it says the Lord's Day, they say that the word Lord is an adjective, which they say is a descriptive, not a noun. So noun is obviously a person, place, or a thing. An adjective is a descriptive word. So they're not say, they, they say that the fact that it's an adjective, not a noun, rules out the idea that this is talking about the Lord's day and instead they say it's the day of the Lord as in the day in which Jesus comes to judge the world. And so John was being taken forward. A lot of commentaries say that. But the interesting thing is this, is that, and I, I checked this with a, a friend of mine who knows three Greek dialects fluently and including New Testament Greek, and I asked him to check out the Didache for me and whether or not the word Lord's day there, the word Lord, whether or not that also was an adjective and he compared the two passages and he said that the grammar was uh, pretty much identical but what was clear was that the word lords was an adjective in the Didache as well and let me read to you what the Didache says because it's very clear that it's referring to and obviously the Didache is not scripture but it, no. it gives us an idea of the Greek and and mm -hmm. the early church fathers beliefs but it gives us an idea of the Greek grammar it says this but every Lord's Day, the word Lord's is also, you know, an adjective there. Gather yourselves together and break bread and give thanksgiving after having confessed your transgressions that your sacrifice may be pure. But let no one that is at variance with his fellow man come together with you until they be reconciled that your sacrifice may not be profaned. And so we just do that at the end when the <laughs> Lord returns. 
<laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And that was in 70 AD. So that's very early that the early yeah, church. That's, and that's, that's uh, Christianity is a creedal religion. Yeah. I mean, and, I mean, we, we go by the word of God. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But when, when we give the gospel, we don't need to have a copy of the scriptures in our hand. No, no, that's right. We can tell the creed yeah. of salvation. Yeah. We're a creedal people. We yeah. we believe certain things. Our doctrinal statements are designed, if you will, as creedal statements. Yeah. And so this being so early in the church is vital. Yeah. Because it just says what the church did. Yeah. That's right. Now, uh, as a caveat, we can see sometimes that the early church fathers did stupid stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. But <laughs> it does but, seem when you read them that they had a, a united view about the Lord's Day. Um, they, they did. There, it, was, yeah. it was not even debated. Yeah, that's right. Gentile or Jew, it wasn't debated. Yeah, that's right. Let me read a, the, a few other quotes um, from the early church fathers. Um, so AD 74, this is the letter of Barnabas. We keep the eighth day, Sunday, with joyfulness, the day also on which Jesus rose again from the dead. Ignatius of Antioch, uh, writing in AD 110, uh, those who were brought up in the ancient order of things have come to the possession of a new hope, no longer observing the Sabbath, referring to the Jews, the ones coming up in the ancient order of things, no longer observing the Sabbath, but living in the observance on of the Lord's day, on which also our life has sprung up again by him and by his death. That was to the letter, letter to the Magnesians, uh, in AD 110. Justin Marder, and I'll just read uh, one more and then give you a list of church fathers that, that also believed it. Uh, it's Justin the Marder in AD 155. He says, but Sunday is the day on which we all hold our common assembly because it, because it is the first day on which God, having wrought a change in darkness, in the darkness and matter, made the world and Jesus Christ, our Savior, on the same day, rose from the dead. So he's saying that the world was created on day one and in the same sense Jesus uh, was resurrected from the dead on day one. That's points to the new creation and that's why we as believers observe Sunday, the day on which Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Let me let me just again interject and then, and then give us that list. But yeah. um, some people when they think of the ancients, they think that they were superstitious non-thinkers. Yeah. And it's just the opposite. Yeah. You, uh, uh, they, they knew how to weed out the con men. Yeah. It's, and it, it, it's important for, for two reasons to understand the church fathers. Number one, it is important to always go back to the original source. Yeah. Church fathers are not the original source. And, and just like us, if we don't go by the scriptures, if we yeah. don't let scripture interpret scripture and we start going by tradition, we get in trouble. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But secondly, it is important to see what was the common belief. I've got, I've got behind me, I've got a book um, called um, The Dictionary of Early Christian Beliefs. Okay. And what it is, is the best book in the whole entire world. <laughs> it is is it will give a subject title yeah like maybe abortion yeah and anytime that subject is written about they just put a block quote okay. of, of what the church fathers wrote right there's no commentary to it it just lists what they wrote mm. and and you can see you can see arguments you can see arguments for um can you lose your salvation you can see arguments for um, the Trinity, you can see arguments for, I mean, I mean, just so many things. And we can see that sometimes they wrestled with the exact same things that we wrestled with. Mm. And sometimes like with the Sabbath day, uh, versus Sunday, the first day of the week, there was no argument. Right. No debate. I mean, they all understood. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that list. Um, and of course, you can always add to this list as well. But you've got um, uh, Origen, 
Eusebius of Caesarea, Athanasia, Athanasius, sorry, the Council of Laodicea, John Chrysostom, and Augustine. And I'm sure we could keep going um, all oh. through church history. Um, sure. But when, it's when it's just whether or not they wrote about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the hard thing.